Well, here it is. The Nakamichi OMS 3A CD player is on the workbench. As you might remember, I got this at the thrift store, and it was having an issue where the uh, when the tray closed, the motor would continue running for a moment, and then the tray would pop back open again. Now, my thought that I had, my initial thought that I had mentioned briefly in the uh, thrift store finds video was that the switch that tells the microcontroller that the tray is fully closed was bad. Well, upon looking at, popping this open and looking at it, it might even be even simpler than that. As you can see, what's supposed to happen here is when it closes, this is supposed to drop down and hold the CD down onto the spindle. Well, it will not do that. As you'll see when I power this on, the motor runs, that thing's not dropping. We can pop it open. See, it opens up just fine. Now if I close it, it just sits there with this thing not fully down and the motor still running, and then eventually pops open, which I want that out of the way. So we'll power that off. Um, so, based on prior experience, and by prior experience I mean specifically my uh, early model Sega CD console, which had a very similar, similar problem, the there is probably a belt in the open and closing mechanism, basically connects a pulley on the motor to another larger pulley. That belt is probably worn out and just starts slipping when it gets to the point that it needs to lower this thing. The fix for this, of course, is very simple because this is not very speed sensitive. It's just to replace that belt with a rubber band like this, and it usually works fine. So without further ado, I will now try to remove the CD tray and attempt to determine if this is indeed what's going on. So after some fiddling around, it turned out that all I have had to do to get to the belt I wanted was pull the front panel off. The belt, my camera will focus on it, is located right there. So we are now going to go ahead, and this may be a little tricky actually because of the way these gears are positioned, but we are going to, let me grab a pair of tweezers here, if I can keep my camera on it. Go ahead and remove this belt. I can figure out how to get it out of here. Yep, there we go. Oh, uh, maybe. Hmm. It's kind of trapped in there by that gear. That's annoying. So, I'll have to figure out a way to get this out. Okay, I think I got it now. So what I did we've done here is I really undid a couple more screws and was able to raise up this entire mechanism here. And it looks like what you gotta do is you gotta get this large gear out. So the way I think you will go about this, and I'm about to try and verify this, is it looks like if you undo this screw right here, you might be able to drop this whole assembly with the motor and then have enough room to get this thing out because they also conveniently have that gear going up through a little slot in there, so you can't just pull it straight off from here. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And sure enough, after removing that screw and another one that was hidden behind the motor, this mechanism did come down. So now what we gotta do is remove this little C-clip here, so we can pull this gear off, and finally get the belt out. Now, of course, as usual, getting C-clips off is one of those things that's much easier said than done, just because they're kind of thing that likes to stay on, but obviously I did manage to get it off finally, after some fiddling. I was trying to do this one-handed, it's going to be rather annoying. Now that I've just dropped the gear. Yeah. Okay. So now, you need to pull this off. This is the offending piece right here. It's not very stretchy anymore. Well, we can fix that. By grabbing this. A much stretchier rubber band. Because this isn't very speed sensitive, it's literally just the open and close mechanism. All we need to do is stick any random rubber band on here, and as long as it doesn't break, we should be fine. Okay, our new uh, belt of sorts is on. Now we just need to put this whole darn thing back together. So we'll stick that gear back there. And 
course, now we got to get the C-clip back on, which that's always fun. Okay, the pesky C-clip is now on. Now to put the whole rest of the thing back together. Okay, everything's back together now. I uh, will go ahead and plug it in. And now the question is, will this work? And the answer is it does. Thing lowers correctly. And now if we turn this light off over here, you can see the display's lit up. It says there's no disc in it. Well, or more accurately, it doesn't say there is a disc in it. So, now the tray opens. And it closes correctly. So now, let's grab a CD here. Turn on my speakers down here before I forget. Let's see if it decides it wants to behave here. There it goes. It does correctly state the information about the CD. So now, go ahead and hit play. Turn that down a little bit. And it seems to work. All the different modes on the display work. Turn that off before I get in trouble. Um, but yeah, so there you go. We now have a newly repaired Nakamichi OMS 3A CD player.